Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Got a product review for you today. I don't do very many of these because I don't really change products that often. And I only review stuff that I actually own and use and love and trust so that you can trust my reviews. So that's why we don't see a ton of reviews and I haven't done a lot lately. But this one is one of my favorite long-standing products, Ozone from Isotope. We're going to look at version 8 today, specifically the Tonal Balance Control plugin that comes in the advanced version of Ozone 8. I'm going to do a couple review videos here because there's a couple features I want to highlight. But today I want to show you this tool that will help you get your mixes to translate out in the real world. Again, Ozone is a product I have used for about 15 years now, okay? I've used it from version 3 forever, then version 5 forever. You can notice how I skip versions because I just stay with the same thing over and over again until there's a much-needed tool that I need to upgrade to. And Ozone 8 is one of those things because of these couple of tools. And today I want to show you one of the reasons why I upgraded to version 8. Here's the problem. When you mix, you can get it to sound good maybe in your room on your speakers or headphones. But what happens when you take it out into the real world? the place where actually the world will be listening to it. Unless you can invite the whole world into your room to listen to it on your speakers, it really matters little what it sounds like to you in your room, unfortunately. It matters what it sounds like out in the real world. And I know what it feels like to have a mix fall apart. You get out in the car and it just, the bottom falls out or it's just too muffled. Or you play it on the iPhone speaker. Not that that's a great speaker, but you can't hear the vocals. And you need to be able to hear the vocals everywhere it's played. So this is a problem. It's called translatability. Does your mix translate? from your studio to somewhere else. This tool is gonna help you know if it will translate. It's called Tonal Balance Control, and I wanna show you how powerful and simple this is. I think this will really enhance your workflow, whether you are just still mixing or mastering. So today I've got a mix that's pretty much done. Let's say I'm feeling good about this mix, and I wanna check it and see if it's gonna translate well out in the real world. Here's a sample of the mix. I'm counting seconds to the All right, and let's take a look at what this mix is doing. So over in my master fader, I'm gonna grab two things. I'm gonna grab Ozone 8 and put it on there in case I wanna use it in a minute. But separate to Ozone, and at the very last insert in my chain, I'm going to grab Tonal Balance Control, which comes part of Ozone 8 Advanced. Now what this plugin does is it gives you sort of like a graph to see your mix and see how it stacks up in comparison to the frequency response of very, very well-known songs. So you've got three different targets that come standard. You have a target called bass heavy, which shows the low end range they recommend for bass heavy music, maybe rap, hip hop, low mid range, high mid range, and high frequency range of where your mix should sit. Then they've got modern, okay, it's a little bit different. And they've got orchestral. And these targets were created by referencing thousands of songs in all kinds of genres and looking for commonalities of where does a well-produced, well-mixed, well-mastered song live frequency-wise and so we know what the target is, where the goal is. So we know that we don't have too much low-end or too much high-end or too little mid-range. And they've done it over three common areas that have different targets because you might want more low-end in a rap song and a lot less top end in an orchestral song, as you can see here. Now, lest you think you're stuck with just three targets, even though I think you can get by with those three targets, you can create your own custom target, get this based off of reference tracks that you like. So you can literally create a custom target from an audio file or a folder of audio files, i.e. an entire album or collection of songs. I've done one such uh, target here called FF for a Foo Fighters song I really, really dig. See, it's a slightly different target, and this is comprised by listening to the actual song. So these targets are very, very helpful. So let's pick modern, because I think this is a modern song. And let's press play, and just look at where my song is. You're going to see white lines and see if they are fitting with inside these targets. I'm counting seconds till the fallout. Call it crazy, call it civil war. Find the beauty. Coming back for more. Is it the 
So you can kind of see I'm really low on low end. For a modern song, I'm barely in the target, it's saying. The, it could it could be accurate. Again, this is comprised of thousands of songs, but it's probably on the low end of what we would want for a song. And then if you were careful, you might have noticed the high mids were kind of on the high end. Definitely acceptable, but there might be a little too much going on in the high mids. That might be something to watch as well. So this doesn't do anything for our music. It just gives us information. It tells us, hey, are we in the ballpark or not? Or am I going to take this out into the real world? And I might think I have enough low end here, but this thing is telling me you probably don't have enough low end. And when you get out to your car, it's going to be very, very thin or light on the low end. Not a good thing. So now I can think about how can I make my mix better? What I love about this is you don't have to do any processing. I can literally now with this information, since I'm still in my mix, go over to my lowly bass track here and turn up the fader. I could just turn up the fader on my bass and see if giving it a little bit more volume on my bass track might get me more in that range. So let's do that. I'm gonna press play and turn up the fader a bit. I'm counting seconds to the fallout. Call it crazy, call it civil war. Find the beauty in the letdown. The fire keeps you coming back for more. Is it the innocence we needed? The time is coming, give a little more. All right, you see how we got the line up a little bit? It's now a little bit more in that acceptable range just by turning up the volume. No processing needed. That's one way to approach it. Of course, we could go to the EQ on the bass and adjust the EQ. We could look at the kick drum, see if it's uh, more kick drum is needed because we don't know exactly what the low end problem is, but we can then still be the masters of our destiny as the mix engineer. We can still make creative decisions just knowing that we got to make sure the low end is correct. And this gives you that information. Now, here's what's cool about how tonal balance control can connect with, let's say, ozone, which I have on my master fader. Over here in Ozone, I can rename this, let's say Ozone EQ, turn off the maximizer, the dynamics. I've just got the, the regular EQ here in Ozone. These plugins can talk to each other. So now down here where it says select a plugin, I can choose Ozone EQ. And it, now I'm controlling the EQ in Ozone without ever having to leave the tonal balance control plugin. This is going to be cool because now I can see, obviously, the frequency response in real time, the analysis tool of the EQ. I can still monitor my targets here, and I can adjust the EQ and fine tune maybe the low end a bit more with some EQ. And maybe I can look at the high mids as well and see if we can get this a little more in the pocket as it were. Let's take a look. I'm counting seconds to the fallout. Call it crazy, call it civil war. Find the beauty in the light. So I'm doing a little bit of EQ adjusting on Ozone, which is right here, and you can take a look. Those are the EQ moves I was making. I'm actually controlling Ozone from Tonal Balance Control, all while looking at this target. Now I might wanna say, let's go to the kick drum and bring up the low end on the kick drum and adjust from there. I might wanna mute the EQ and see if we're making any improvement. It may need to be specific EQ or compression on my individual tracks. But the point is, is you can see how all of this is giving us information to know if our mix has the right amount of top end, high mid, low mid, or low end. 
It even tells you up here in the crest factor, on the very left, if you have too much dynamic range in your bass, where it's all over the place, like loud, quiet, loud, quiet, which would be too much of that. On the right would be overly compressed, just a squashed bass with no dynamics. You wanna be in the sweet spot, and it looks like my low end has been right in the sweet spot, which means I got the low end well there, which is good. But that's another piece of information it's giving you to look at. There's even a fine view, so you can take a look at what it looks, looks like in a more rounded, specific range here. I'm counting seconds to the fallout. Call it crazy, call it civil war. Find the beauty in the letdown. The fire keeps you coming back for more. Is it the innocence we needed? The time is coming, give a little more. The beauty's living. And there you go, there is tonal balance control. I'm just scratching the surface of what this tool can do for you in terms of giving you some parameters with which to work in. Again, this is part of the Ozone 8 Advanced Bundle, so it comes in the more expensive version of it, but if you're looking for a tool that can do your mastering, that can help you in the mix phase, I've used Ozone on my mix bus as a mixing tool for over a decade, not just for mastering, then it's worth getting all the goodies that you can because this isn't one plugin. This is tons and tons of plugins, and these guys are just really, really good at what they do. And again, it's one of those plugins I've had for over 15 years that I use on just about every single mix and or master that I do. Now, there is a lot that goes into mastering, and we were kind of scratching the surface of mastering today. I know I'm still in the mix, but I'm basically doing global movements to the whole mix on the master fader. There's a lot to think about when it comes to mastering. It can be a very complex topic, but at the same time, it really doesn't have to be. But it's very important for you. If you're making music, you don't wanna release it until it's been mastered. Now, you can master your own music. I master my own music 99% of the time. That's why I teach mastering as often as I can. Now, if you wanna get started making your own music and releasing it to the world, you gotta understand mastering, and you gotta understand that it's one of six steps in the entire music creation process. So what I wanna do is help you understand how to think about mastering and how to do it. I've got a guide for you called my six steps to a radio ready song guide. In this guide, I show you all six steps from song idea to release. When it comes to mastering, step six, we go in depth on what that means, what it doesn't mean, how to think about mastering, and how you can actually start mastering your own music at home, even if you don't have ozone. This tool obviously will help you a lot, but you can get started with stock EQs and compressors and the tools that you need. But it, you need to understand what mastering is, what it isn't, and where it falls in the song creation process. Again, this is a free tool I've put together for you. Download it right now at Radio Ready Guide. Dot com. It's my gift to you for watching these videos, for actually taking these things and putting them into action. You guys are some of the best students out there because you actually go to work. And so I wanna give you more tools so you can get to work and actually get results. So download it, it's a free PDF, very simple to read, but it will give you a map for music making and mastering is a huge part of that so that it's ready for release into the real world. So grab your copy at RadioReadyGuide.com. Subscribe to these videos if you find them helpful. Let me know if you're using Ozone 8, how you're using it, what you think about it, if you're thinking about grabbing it. Love to see your feedback in the comment section below. That's it for today, my friend. Another Ozone review coming soon when we talk about some more of the mastering features in this plugin. Until then, my friend, have a great week. Make some great music. We'll see you on another video real soon.